Hey everybody, welcome back to He Works Hard for the Honey. Um, we were actually starting uh, something we've been working on for a while, a little, little interview series with local professionals, small business owners, uh, and we're going to kick this off today with Jen Lund, who is the state apiarist. Welcome. I am, I am. Thank Jen you. Jen was here uh, inspecting the hives. We got a... a clean good, bill of health. Clean bill of health. <laughs> um, so once we have our licenses in place, we can start to sell honey look at us in July but while she's here I wanted to um, just get you on tell us a little bit about what that means to, to be the state apiarist yeah so um, it's a really cool position um, I actually work in the I probably have the coolest of the apiary positions because I work in the best state with the best beekeepers obviously obviously and um, but I um, what I do is I, I really spend a lot of time, of most of my year, working with um, local beekeepers, resident beekeepers, helping them with their hives. Um, if they have problems, you know, they give me a call. If they have any health concerns, obviously, um, they give me a call. I also work with our migratory beekeepers, so we get somewhere between 20 and, you know, 80,000 hives a year for pollination services for our blueberries and apples, mostly, but also some other small fruit. Um, and I make sure they're coming in disease without the diseases that we're concerned about and I inspect them again so that starts up next week I start roaming around mid coast and looking through migratory hives so. I'm glad we got you for these <laughs> hives when we did that yes this is uh, this is my super May and June are I'm pretty much straight out for everything I just happened to be coming down today and I was like oh I can sco scooch in in the morning so um, so yeah but uh, I spend about five weeks with the migratory bees and then um, before that I work with a lot of our new producers and take a look at stuff before they sell it, um, used equipment, things like that that need inspections before we um, before they're sold so that they're you know we're not just moving disease around the state and then I work with my migratory beekeepers and then the remainder of the year is usually our resident beekeepers and and then I also do a lot of hive autopsies during the winter. So I, I keep, I, I look at bees all year round. <laughs> People are always like, you have the winter off, right? <laughs> nope, I get no no time off, so. Yeah. As the state apiarist, you're, you're obviously sort of very deep into this nasty, expensive habit. <laughs> Why bees? How did you get? So it's kind of, a, my, my story is kind of a little bit um, odd in that I actually, my degrees are in entomology, so I studied insects. Um, I got an undergraduate degree in New York, and then I actually finished up a master's degree up at University of Maine. And I was working at University of Maine on ants, and so a project with um, European fire ants. Any of you who live on the coast, you know how problematic they can be. And so I was doing, um, working on that, my funding was ending, and there was a, a wonderful professor at the University of Maine, his name's Frank Drummond, and he was walking down the hallway and he's like, hey, I just got this grant for working with honeybees, do you, uh, you want in? And I, I was like, I don't know anything about bees. He's like, you'll be fine. So I started my very first year with five hives in my backyard and 40 research hives. And I fell in love with it and love, you know, I ran a lot of the research for the University of Maine um, apiary program. And on campus, we have anywhere between 40 to 80 hives at any given time that they're doing research on. And so I worked on all kinds of different projects. And then a couple of years ago, this position opened up and um, I applied for it and got it. And now I'm in my dream job. So, and here we are. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and just finally, I, I just try to sort of encourage people or, or educate people as best I can. What can they do to sort of help honeybees? Yeah, so that's, that's actually a really good question. There's lots of things that people can do who don't necessarily want to keep bees because it, it is an expensive hobby and it can also be, um, you know, challenging, especially if you have a, a lot of other things that you need to be doing in your life because the bees don't wait for us. We have to work on their schedule. And so if it's not something you want to undertake, you know, keeping bees, things that you can do to help people who do want to keep bees, and also your native bees, which are very, very important in our landscapes, um, you can plant flowers in your yard. Um, it's really that simple, planting a lot of, a wide diversity of things for them. Um, they don't have to be beautiful, showy things. They can even be, you know, simple things like dandelions. That's how I never have to mow my lawn is I'm 
like, it's bee food. I don't need to mow my lawn, it's bee food. Um, so planting flowers, um, providing habitat for bees, so especially for our native bees, they need things like um, housing, so where they live, um, so old tree snags, you know, if you have a lot of property, if it's not impacting, it's not gonna hurt somebody leaving an old tree, standing a dead tree, some bees will nest in that sort of material. Having bare spots in the yard is good. Bees also, there's a lot that ground nest and that's a good way to do that. Um, and also being really careful around your property with pesticide use. So most of the stuff that we, most of the stuff that happens um, in your yard, you wanna, if you have to do any sort of pesticide application, you wanna try to ma make sure you're not spraying flowers that are in bloom. Um, because those are the ones that the bees are visiting, so avoid those. Um, if you have to, you know, spray something or apply something to blooming flowers, do it in the evening when the bees are already kind of done foraging for the day. Um, and then also um, use the least toxic thing. There's a lot of labeling now, so watch, so read the packages really carefully. And there's usually a sticker on there or a panel that talks about the bee toxicity of it, and it will tell you hey, this is relatively safe for bees, or this is really toxic for bees, and so you wanna choose something that's on the safer side, um, or the least toxic side. And so those are three things that everybody can just do in their backyards um, that can be really impactful for bees. Perfect. So, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much you're for stopping welcome. in, and thank you for taking this time. I know you're yeah. super busy, but. <laughs> yep, full day of appointments, so after this one, I, have, I think I have four more today, so. Yes. Well, awesome. Thank we'll you. We'll let you go, but yep. everybody, the state apiarist, Jen Lund, yep. and uh, join us again for He Talks Heart for the Honey.